The year is 2030 and I have been hired by SpaceX as a second group of engineers to work on the colonization of Mars. I came as soon as I could. What's the situation on Mars? But just before entering orbit, things went very wrong. A solar storm, biggest we've ever seen. It caused significant damage to the colony. Control, I managed to get out. I'm in a pod. Who am I speaking to? Uh, this is astronaut Kruger Ops. Who the hell is this? This is Elon Musk. I'm in charge of the whole Mars colonization project. That's great, sir, but oh no, I've been hit. I'm spiraling out of control. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. But somehow I survived and things were now down to me. So there are still heroes in this world. Cause you see in a hundred days, a ship of civilians arrives and if this base is not ready by then, they will not make it. I am Kruger Ops and this is my story. Your seat is in range. Your health fighting is alive. So after surviving the crash and healing myself up, I managed to kick down the door, fill my oxygen and then I got some bad news. No living crew members detected. Being the sole survivor of the ship, I knew I needed to track down the Phoenix team. I shortly after got another inspirational message from Elon. I think first thing you gotta do is, is build a, a base. So I constructed my little scrap hut. Once that was done, I made myself a little workbench where I could make some tools. I then wanted to make a furnace where I could smelt some metals, followed by a radar dish. But since I didn't have the materials and it was getting dark, I decided to go to bed. Still no word from the Phoenix team, I decided the next morning to go scavenge for more materials. My suit got punctured by a plant and I was now losing air. System restored. Luckily I had duct tape and healing tape on hand, and shortly after I spotted a mine. So I went over to investigate, but I needed a key card to gain access. I did however find some mine cards that had a bunch of nice goodies, but I started to lose oxygen quickly and I started to panic. So I made my way back. Oxygen levels dangerous. Luckily my escape pod still had plenty of oxygen in the tanks. I managed to make the radar dish with the goodies from the mine and then I had an incoming transmission. Are you there? Come in, Hawk. Do you read me? Dawkin, how the hell are you alive? Are you still on this ship? I'm down on Mars. I was lucky enough to be in the nav module when the explosion happened. This channel is using too much power. I must conserve. Please hurry. But Dawkin on the ship was the least of my worries as I spotted a strange living organism and after gathering some more berries I heard more nearby, some strange looking spider aliens and my blades were completely numb at this point so I had to take refuge as I couldn't fight them off. Luckily I managed to get a rock and I was able to craft a new one and then finally once it was dark I was able to take care of the weird looking aliens. Oh hey, do you want to impress Elon Musk yourself and get hired? Well, why don't you check out today's sponsor and get yourself enlisted? This World War II multiplayer shooter game that has a strong focus on historical authenticity while keeping gameplay dynamic, truly having you feel right in the middle of some crazy action. Did I mention it's available on all the below seen platforms as well as allowing cross-platform support? So come check out this large PvP dogfight, assigning your team and assigning their loadout. With no purchase needed, simply follow my link, download and play and jump right into the action. Whether you want to sit behind the tank or jump on an aircraft and become a pilot with an increasing arsenal of armored cars, tanks, fighters, bombers and many many more. The campaign includes multiple unique maps for players to truly immerse themselves in iconic historical map locations such as the Battle for Moscow or the Invasion of Normandy. Personally, I love the weapons variety. Enlisted features hundreds of firearms and specialized weapons commonly seen throughout the war. Oh, you're dead now. Boom. Another favorite part is once you are down, you can immediately transfer to another soldier and get right back into the fight. So grab all your friends and come check out Enlisted now. And using my link, you will earn yourself a massive free bonus pack. So hurry, it's a limited time deal. I hope to see you on the battlefield. Now let's continue our journey back on Mars. I was finally able to make my first chisel and with that I could start farming some metals and see just what was needed to fix the buggy. I smelted some rubber and went to grab some magnesium. I was again caught off guard by a little spider alien. Well hello there, you wanna be my friend? But he didn't, he just ended up biting me and I had to again heal up and apply some duct tape. Finally I was able to start repairing some of the wheels on the buggy and then had a quick look at what was still remaining. I now needed some bronze, so I went searching around for the final missing ingredients, grabbing the last tin that I needed and then making my way back home. But I heard I got followed and once I finally took care of it, I heard even more coming in. Seriously? My blades are broken. But even with blunt blades, I got them into corners and finally stabbed them to death and raced it up for the night. The next day, grabbing some oxygen and then got to experience my first rain on Mars. Now this rain can be very bad for you as it slowly cools you down. I heard something overhead and that's when I spotted a falling object. What the hell was that? Oh dang! I went over to check it out, grabbing some copper, my final ingredient, and then saw it was a meteorite stacked with a valuable resource named zirconium. 
Finally, I mounted the final bronze and I was able to finish up the buggy, also earning an inflatable dome kit as well as the key card. I then hopped in since I now had the means to find the Phoenix team. Make my way down Mars, driving fast, spiders past, and I'm homebound. -ni 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 -ni. And I need you. -ni 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 -ni. Uh, but my joy quickly went away when I hopped out and I saw the name of the location where I was. I don't know what that is, but I hear it. What is that? <laughs> drive, 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 drive! Oh my god. Oh. Stupid rock! Get out of my way! And after remaining fully calm, I was able to drive away and finally find the Phoenix base. Fox, did you get to Phoenix base? What do you see? You know, this place is abandoned. Even the rover is freaking wrecked. So I salvaged all the parts that I could and then dropped down my inflatable dome. I made sure the giant worm was nowhere to be seen before going to rest up for the night. Wondering what the hell had happened to the Phoenix team. The next day I went out to explore another nearby mine that I saw on my way passing, gathered some more nice loot from the mine cards and continued searching around for any sign of life. Finding even more loot and then finding yet another door that I needed a green access card for. But since I didn't have it, for now I had to head back home. But on my drive back I spotted a bunch of plants so I went to gather up a bunch of alien fiber so I could make some more cloth. I then went back to the habitat and I started working on repairing the hallway. And since the airlock needed power before I could enter, I was forced to sleep in my little tent yet again. The next morning I finally figured out that using a workbench you can sharpen up all your blunt tools and reuse them, no need to repair them. So I took back to the worm graveyard and I got ready to do some farming. Kiting out the worm and then safely driving away. Oh no, the rock again! Oh, that was so close. Dang, this thing is crazy. After my narrow escape, I went around gathering up all the space debris, parts of the fallen ship, and dropping it off safely in my buggy, before continuing farming. Ooh, rock. Hey, little buddy, I don't know if you're friendly, but I'm just going to grab this little piece of debris here. Don't attack me. Farming led to some hunger, and after enjoying a nice carrot ration, I decided to go out and farm some more of the much-needed metal so I could build a forge. I started with some aluminium, but then a massive windstorm broke out, not only interrupting my farming, but it was also able to damage me. But after some duct tape and healing, I was back on the road, and finally the storm cleared and I was able to grab some of the last required metals. Once I had everything that I believed that I needed, iron, metal and silver, I made my way back home, sharpened up all my tools again and then constructed myself the forge and filled it up with fuel before going and calling it a night, making sure there was no nasties in the area and I could have a peaceful sleep. The next morning checking if the coast is clear and then I started by making some plastic as well as rubber from all the scraps collected. I constructed some wire and then went to repair more parts of the airlock. But I didn't have nearly enough plastics or wire, so I decided I would take back to the mine. But then I got prompted with low fuel, and I still had no idea how to refill the buggy. So I made my way inside the mine, hoping to find some form of a fuel source. After searching around, searching through all the mine carts and finding an awesome pistol, I finally found all the wires and plastics needed, continued exploring and found a massive cavern containing all sorts of valuable metals including diamonds. I had to restock on my oxygen and then I found a pool of methane, hoping I could use this as fuel, but this wasn't a viable fuel source and I was now in serious trouble. I decided to make the drive back to my starter base, remembering the pool of liquid, but unfortunately this was methane as well. I had a quick look at some upgrades that would allow me to use any source of fuel, but unfortunately it got too dark, so I decided to rest up and search again the next morning, exploring around on foot and finding another missing element that I would need for the construction of of the vacuum chamber, so I farmed all of it up and continued searching, taking back into the mine to go for one more search, hoping somewhere I would find fuel. Not only did I have some nice loot, but I also had the blue access card, allowing me even further access into the mine. Searching around, finding some more mine cards, and then got met by yet another door that required the highest level of tier access, a black access card. But still no sign of fuel, I decided to venture back. It was already pitch dark. Luckily this time I had a pistol on hand and I got to put it to use, taking care of another spider alien and then farming some berries to eat for the night. I got followed home by even more spiders that I quickly took care of and then restocked on some oxygen. 
another rainstorm started to break out, so I quickly ran to take shelter. It was hella cold, so I enjoyed a not so peaceful sleep on the ground and throughout the rain, the next morning I woke up to another meteor shower, knowing that one of these could hit me at any point in time. So it was time to man up, hop back into the buggy and hopefully have just enough fuel to get me back home. But I couldn't afford to go out of my way and see what resource it had, so I continued pushing on, switching off my AC and radio to conserve fuel, nearly making it back home. I then constructed myself some glass and with this I was finally able to build the new forge, stock it up with the methane that wasn't completely useless and then made myself another blade, as well as the derulium from the gathered resources and with this I was finally able to continue construction on the airlock, now just a few bits of plastic needed. Taking back to the worm graveyard and this time on foot, man was I nervous. Okay, he's coming. Right away, right away. Please tell me I'm fast enough. Please tell me I get away from this guy. Oh, this thing is huge. And after the escape, I finally had the rubber pieces needed and continued searching around for a few more bits, making my way back and fighting through some more spiders. How does my pistol taste, buddy? And with all the threats neutralized, I made my way inside and had a nice relaxing night's sleep, ready to finally complete the vacuum chamber the next day. But that's when I also discovered the skill system where you're able to upgrade your levels and assign some special tasks that will improve your farming, movement speed or melee. I was still short one piece of plastic but I was able to do some repairs on the habitat and once I saw through the window I knew I wanted to get this place done. If I wanted any chance of surviving I had to take risks, running from yet another giant worm and then going to search for the last missing piece of plastic. And finally tracking a piece down, I was now equipped with everything I needed. So I got myself a nice juicy alien steak and then started making my way back on foot, smelting the final piece of plastic and completing the airlock, then making some Zamax so I could start working on the habitat frame supports. And then realizing I still needed zinc, I went to rest back up. The next day I started working on farming some carbon, but see this is one of the hardest materials and my picks were simply just not strong enough. So a lot of back and forth repairing them as I went and finally I had all the carbon needed to start making some steel plates. And with a habitat roof done I still needed some gunmetal and zamac which meant I needed more zinc. So I went out searching but got caught in a rainstorm and had to run to take some cover as it was getting really cold. I couldn't remember exactly where I found zinc before but I was convinced it was in the mines. So I made my way inside just as it was getting dark outside. But boy was this a big mistake. What are those dust clouds? <laughs> there's spiders in here now. Why are there Why is there so many? Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, my aim is horrible. I'm gonna die. With my suit breach, I was now drastically losing oxygen, but I was still under attack. Down to just 1% of oxygen, I was able to patch myself up heal up, but it was way too cold, I had to make a run for it. I decided I would sleep outside and go back the next morning, at least hopefully the spiders wouldn't spawn as many, but this time I had a little bit of a bigger brain and I took refuge on top of a rock as I started taking them out one by one. After they were all taken care of, the spawns had stopped and I was able to search around for zinc. Don't tell me I did all of that for nothing, is there no zinc here? Unsuccessful in my venture, I made the long way back home. And that's when I discovered this unique GPS system the game offers. And with this you can search around for the desired metals as well as hydrogen gas. So now I knew I would be able to refuel my buggy. So I stocked my inventory with food and supplies and then picked up my little inflatable dome and I started the long journey there. Once it would get too dark to continue passing to avoid spider spawning I would drop down the dome. The next morning I passed some lithium rocks and I decided to farm all of them up. I continued pushing forward and finally spotted zinc as well as a little spider frame. You couldn't just let me farm in peace, see now you're dead. And then after grabbing all the zinc as well as some cobalt along the way I finally spotted the hydrogen vein. I filled up my two canisters and once I was stocked on fuel I had a quick search if there was any magnesium nearby, another one of my my missing resources and after grabbing all that I needed I started venturing the long way back home. It's over this mountain, oh there it is. Now able to refill the buggy as well as dropping down my inflatable dome again. I constructed the zamac as well as the gunmetal and finally continued construction and completing the habitat. And next up I had to complete the second one so I went to farm some aluminium but it got way too dark so I decided to make my way back before the spiders spawn and rested up. 
The next morning I made myself a shovel so I could dig some sand and smelt this into glass. And this ended up being the final resource needed to complete the second habitat. Next up was the biodome and a place where I could grow some plants. But this required more steel so I had to go farm up a bunch of carbon, repairing my tools as I went and then finally having the final bits to smelt down the steel, smelt down the glass and repair the biodome. And luckily having all the materials needed to complete the electrical control unit. Next up was the hallway as well as the barracks. After completing the bits that I could and going to see what was needed to complete the barracks, but it required chromium which was something I didn't have. I then ran into a little spider on my way in to the inflatable dome. Leave me alone, I just want to sleep. Which is exactly what I did, and I couldn't wait to sleep inside the habitat, so the next day I tracked down some chromium and started farming it up. I was seriously in need of some better pickaxes as this was a tedious process. I then went back to the barracks to do a quick count on all the materials that I needed, farm up the missing aluminium and then smelted down plastic and nitro. I then completed some more panels that I could and searched around for more elements. I hate chemistry! And then ventured out to grab some nearby tin finally reaching the location and starting to farm it up. And then once I had all that I needed, I started driving back home. And once I reached, I smelted down some bronze and gunmetal, constructed even more parts of the walls, and then going to rest up for the evening. The cry never stopped. Next day, venturing out yet again, and then I went in search for some zinc grabbing the first pile and then driving to the second, which would hopefully be the final missing resources. Farming up yet another rock and then taking the drive back home. Once home, I smelted down to some bronze and gunmetal and then filled in more panels. Now just a few wires and plastic short. And tired from being chased around by a giant worm, I decided to go search the mines, grabbing all the resources in the mine carts and exploring even deeper. Yeah, I hear you. Tell me what it's like down there, okay? And once taking care of all the spiders, I managed to search through some even more loot, finding some data disks as well as the green access card. And then continued searching through the mine, coming into another mining chasm and then another door that required the black access card. But when I finally found the missing pieces of plastic, this was not a wasted trip. So I made my way back home and rested up for the evening. Just in time as I was about to run out of fuel. Finally, the next morning, I completed all the panels for the barracks. I then completed the hallway, and now the base was complete. I now just needed to power it. So I went over to the solar panels and had to make myself a power cell, as well as upgrade my forge, when I saw a diamond pickaxe. I definitely wanted this. But for now, I had to farm the good old classic way, repairing my tools as I went along. And then after having all the required materials to make the steel needed, I was able to go back to the solar panels and complete them up. Completing all of them and then having to run from a rainstorm to take shelter for the rain to pass. I then made my way to check out what I needed for the power distributor, killed another spider and raced it up. The next morning upgrading the workbench and then constructing some computer screens to finish the power distributor and then wire up the base. Finally I was able to go inside, turn on the airlock and once the room was pressurized I made my way inside to search for any signs of Phoenix crew. But all that there was was a bunch of broken appliances that I now had to repair. So I decided to check out the rover instead. I was able to immediately complete a bunch of tires, but then I needed something called a zirconium circuit board. I had a meteor shower nearly rain down right on top of the base, so of course I had to check it out. It was too close. And as luck would have it, it was another zirconium meteor. So after grabbing all the broken pieces, I went back inside the base, used my green access card and gained access to the biodome. I then went to construct some more computer screens as well as another chisel, and with this I was finally able to repair a whole bunch of the broken appliances. Now that I had a computer, I was also able to research all the data disks I have collected. And after learning all the new blueprints, I called it a night, ready to start working on them the next morning. But first I had to go refuel my buggy, so I drove back to the vein, this time with a lot more canisters, filling them all up with hydrogen and then filling up the buggy. Once done, I refilled all the canisters and placed them into the buggy so I had some backup fuel. I then took back to the mine, armed with three mediocre chisels as well as three crappy ones, in the hope I would get just one piece of diamond. And as luck would have it, with my very final chisel, I was able to crack off a piece, knowing I can now make a diamond chisel the next day. So after resting up, I first had to get some more metal, so it was back to using the mediocre ones and repairing them back and forth, and finally I had my diamond chisel. I made some more computer screens and finished up the appliances, earning another data disk. And with just two more broken appliances, after collecting the titanium and some more debris, I was able to make the wires and finally the base was complete. Oh, 
was too hard. Before I could complete the rover, I needed the 3D printer. So I scan around for the missing materials and then I sat out, spotting a fallen crate and then grabbing its contents and then continuing my search, searching around for all the missing chromium that I would need. Now armed with all the resources, I made my way back to base to farm up the final metal needed. The diamond pickaxe was working amazingly. And before the end of the day, I finally had my 3D printer made. Oh man, that's hella expensive. So I went to check exactly how many boards I would need, farm the aluminium and copper needed, and went back to base to make the zerk alloy needed as well as the cubic zirconia. I then waited out yet another sandstorm and then finally went to check what I needed for a zirconium plate. My last missing resources was some magnesium, so I did a quick scan and located some but it was getting too dark, so I rested up for the night and went out the next morning, grabbing the first bit and then stepping into the worst territory ever. There were just so many spiders protecting this little bit of magnesium. But I wasn't gonna let that stop me at all. <laughs> you guys just keep coming, don't you? I think I'm scared of you with this pistol? And with all of them dealt with, I was finally able to grab the magnesium as well as the titanium and then went to another mine to grab some batteries. You know, I heard you were following me, take that. And after searching through all the mine carts, I was able to locate a total of three batteries. So I started making my way back home. So I made all the resources needed to finish up the plates and then made my circuit boards and added them to the rover. And luckily I had just enough to finish up all the struts. I now just needed to complete the final two axles. But this would require yet another meteor shower. But with none in sight, I went inside to rest up for the night. Hey, what the hell are you guys doing here? After taking care of the morning pest, I heard a meteor shower raining down. So I hopped in my buggy and I went in pursuit, tracking it down. But this one was different. It had uranium. Not exactly what I was looking for. I went in search for the second meteor and after tracking it down, I was disappointed to see it only had lead. Another rainstorm started and I was forced to take refuge inside to wait it out. Out of boredom, I read through all the voice logs to see if there was any clues as what to happen to the Phoenix crew. I'm bored. Meteors, where are you? After even throwing donuts to entertain myself, I decided to do something productive and farm up a ton of diamonds and then make my way back home to try and make myself an assault rifle the next morning. This thing was gonna be awesome. So I spent the rest of the day farming up a ton of iron and carbon so I could make all the steel plates to make the ammunition needed and convert them to diamond rounds. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Maybe I started to lose my mind a little bit, but waiting around for meteors were killing me. So after another unsuccessful day and resting up for the night, I finally got to test out my assault rifle. Oh wait, was that a shooting star? And after making a wish that I would hopefully see some meteors, I decided to spend the time productively finishing up the gas tank and smelting down the metals needed to finish up the bins inside the biodome as well. And then went to sit outside, stargazing yet another night, hoping and praying I would see meteors. The next day I felt really stupid. Oh, I could scan for them all along. They don't just come from meteors. After I finally used my brain, I managed to track down some of the zirconium and went to farm up all the rocks in the area. And man, was they more than enough. I decided to stock up so I would have some supplies for the future as well and then made my way back just as it started to rain. Rushing as it started to hurt me and then quickly running inside the airlock, waiting out the storm, making my cubic zirconia and then once it cleared, I finally got to finishing up the rover. Oh, I'm so excited. This thing is freaking awesome. I was now prompted to go and locate a special bot that I could use as my personal assistant. And of course, I had to take the rover out for a test drive. After locating the bot, I first had to deal with the welcoming committee. Why the hell is there so many here? You guys, just come leave me alone for one day in peace, can you? Once the coast was clear, I saw what the blueprint was to repairing the bot and I then got to driving out so I could start working on gathering it up. One item I didn't know how to make was a hydrogen battery, but luckily I was able to make the chemistry station, encrypted the data disk from the rover and I now knew exactly what I needed to do. So the next morning I sat out, ran into a fallen satellite and I was able to gather up a bunch of scraps and then continued searching for some more debris nearby. I was in dire need of rubber as well as plastics, so I continued searching. I ran into the worst area possible. There were so many spiders here and they just kept spawning. Right now leave me alone, I just need some rubber. Seriously, another one? Oh, you guys just keep coming. I was definitely being overrun by them. This was complete chaos. Come on, you get a bullet, you get a bullet, you get a bullet, you get a bullet, you get a bullet. 
I'm like freaking Oprah today. Everyone gets a diamond bullet. When the chaos finally subsided, I was able to grab the rubber needed and hopped in the buggy to make a quick escape. Why is there so many following me? I made it back home safely, smelted down the rubber scraps, made the wires, and then finally I was able to construct the droid. I then got another call. Fox, good news. I've been able to reboot the new dog system. Seriously? You got the computer up, and I hope you're okay up there, but I haven't been able to find anyone from the Phoenix team. I'm a little worried. We need to perform a wider review. I'm picking up a large sat dish, which should link up to the GPS satellite. If you can get that online, we should be able to find them. So I got back to home base and instructed my bot to stay and then raced it up for the night before going to search for the dish. And she wasn't joking about how massive the satellite dish was. Unfortunately, I still needed to repair it, but luckily I saw a mine nearby, and hopefully I would find some good resources inside. After grabbing all the loot as well as the red key card, I made my way outside to go farm up some more resources. I also dropped down yet another small satellite dish to broaden my search range. Finally armed with all the resources, I went to search around for the satellite and finally tracked it down and was able to repair it. But it now needed three relay stations to be turned on. But that night, I kinda started losing my own mind, as I spotted some strange red eyes off in the distance. I was super creeped out. Hello? What the hell is that? Why is it looking at me? I'm, I'm, I'm kinda too scared to go up. Oh, where did, where did you go? Yep, nope, 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 I'm getting the hell out of here. I am not dealing good with paranormal activities. How the hell must I sleep with that thing out there? I don't know. After finally getting some shut eye, I went out the next day to refuel the buggy and I was going to search for all the different relay stations. The first mine ended up being the wrong one, so I went back to yet another. And once I entered, I saw relay station 1 on my radar, so I went closer, but unfortunately I needed the black access card. I still didn't know how to get it, so I went back to base, had a pleasant night's rest, and then the next morning remembered about my red access card. It was used to unlock the barracks that still had a bunch of broken appliances. So I got to work to make the computer screens as well as cloth bundles, and then farm up some copper as well as aluminium. And equipped with all the resources, I made my way back to repair all the broken structures. And once I repaired the locker, I managed to see that the black key card had been inside this whole time. I then went to adjust the power grid, and now I would be able to take my very first shower. Wait, there's no animation? That sucks! I waited for the rain to pass, since I didn't want to get dirty yet again, and then made my way back to the mine, popping down my inflatable pod and resting up right outside, so I could get early access the next morning. Finally unlocking the door and making my way to the first comms relay station and turning it on. Now just two more to go. The rest of the mine was disappointingly empty so I made my way back and I wanted to start making yet another barrack so I could start preparing for the visitors that were coming soon. So I made some more steel plates but it started to rain yet again and I had to wait out yet another storm. While searching for the second mine I was quickly losing daylight so I decided to go back to my very first base and rest out the night from there, deciding I would rather search the next morning. And when daylight finally came, I was able to track down the gamma mine and made my way inside and search for the relay station too, using my keycard yet again to gain access. So what the hell are you doing in here, little buddy? Waiting for me? And then proceeding to turning on the second comms relay station. Now with just a third to go and me knowing exactly where it was, I knew this would be a quick little adventure the next morning. So once daylight arrived, I made my way over to the third mine making my way slowly inside. I was super excited that with the help of the satellite, I would finally be able to track down the Phoenix team. So I finally found comms relay station 3 and turned it on. Went back outside, but it was already dark, so I decided to rest up before heading out to the satellite the next morning. Finally venturing over, searching around for it and getting a little bit lost, I finally had it in my sights. So I went over to the computer, but it required a password. So I searched through my voice logs and finally found it. Now that I knew what it was, I entered it into the satellite dish and thus gained access. This satellite dish was now officially online. I then called Dokken to inform him. Dokken, come in. I managed to get the satellite on. Can you start performing the search? I'm sorry. All system computers have been shut down. You mean lady? Turn them back on, let's find the others. We can get the hell out of here. There's no need. We're safe where we are now. What, what the hell do you mean? Turn them back on! Dokken, are you okay? Oh boy. Clearly Dokken was losing her mind. But the satellite dish did reveal something. Seriously? 
stupid spiders. A spaceship and my means to get back up there and hopefully save her before it's too late. So I quickly checked on everything I needed to repair it and went back to rest up. The next day I started farming all the resources, chromium, tin and nickel. And I also added a satellite dish upgrade to my buggy to expand my search and then rest it up before going out the next day to farm up even more. I had no idea how to make the thrust controllers for the rocket, but I was able to upgrade my workbench and make some suit upgrades and then spend the rest of the day doing some organizing and then applying my new suit upgrade and going to bed. But it was now high time I got this place in order to accept the incoming guests from the new ship. I dropped down a fertilizer collector and collected some sand and had a quick look at what I needed to make another habitat. I set out to do some farming, starting with copper and followed by a bunch of aluminium. Next up I farmed some zinc and then farmed even more aluminium until it got way too dark to do farming. And with full pockets I went to bed. The next day I went out to farm more resources and with the final pieces in place I was able to construct yet another habitat. But this led to a major problem as it raised the ground floor and ended up filling my base with sand. So I decided to make even more steel plates and go up to rest the night before setting out the next morning to find a better more open space location. Dropping down the habitat and now I was able to start working on the walls. I knew it would be important that this base would at least be able to accommodate 20 to 30 astronauts. So I got to work. After dropping down the airlock vacuum I was super exhausted from the day's work. Killed some spiders that were waiting for me before I would be able to rest up. And after recharging my batteries I got to work to placing down three more barracks that were connected to the habitat. Next up I started filling in all the walls for the barracks, having some windows so they would have a nice view and then calling it yet another night. And the next day I decided I would add yet another hallway so I could place down another habitat and join the two together. So I filled in the airlock and man was this place looking awesome. I rested up for the night and then the next day I placed down three biodomes so they could grow their very own plant. And after filling in the walls as well as the ceiling I had pretty much exhausted my materials. I now just needed to power the whole place up. So I dropped down all the solar panels and connected the wiring. And with the living chambers complete I wanted to check it out but my airlock wasn't working. It turns out I still had a little hole. And after patching it up I was finally able to make my way inside and check it out. I added more solar panels to power the full place up, dropped down some oxygen, climate control and then the next day I started filling in all the beds, making sure that there would be sufficient space for all the astronauts. Oh man that's a lot of fast talking. But hey I don't like to waste your time. The next day I filled in a little bit of storage and with the last bits of resources I had left I started constructing a few compost bins. Using feces and sand I was able to make soil but this was clearly not enough so I dropped down some more poop collectors and this would double up production. But with the added biodomes my power was way too short so I added a few more solar panels and finally the whole place was well lit up. Just look at that man, it's beautiful. The next day I was back to the material grind, making all the resources I required to fill in the kitchen appliance. I also added some water as well as chemistry stations and then a few more compost bins. Finally now they were all getting the soil that they would need so my plants could start growing. Wait, I needed seeds for that. So after grabbing all the berries I could, I planted them and rested up. Just a few plants away from having all of them filled up, I went out to gather even more seeds that I could find, spotting a new mine off in the distance and killing some spiders that prevented me from going in. Oh, I see you coming. You made me miss twice. You stupid. I then made my way into the unexplored mine and went to search for some mine cards that had some more valuable loot. Searching through the entire place I finally found some more data discs as well as a bunch of voice logs that would contain more clues as to where the Phoenix team was. Once I finally collected all of it I made my way back outside and back to base to call it a night. I then decrypted the data disc and I learned how to make the fabricator, possibly the way of how to make the thrust control. But at this point my resources was completely depleted and I had to drop down a radar dish to further expand my search and finally when I had all the materials the fabricator was down. Please tell me this is how you do it, <gasps> there it is, yes baby! So I made the missing plates and finally made my thrust collectors and now I would be able to get the ship running. After resting up of course, the next morning I made my way over there. It has been days since I heard from Dokken and I knew once I get the ship up and running, there would be a chance of hope. Dokken are you there? Dokken do you read me? Oh man tell me I'm not too late. We like the light. It's much better this way. Hearing her voice again as crazy as she sounded I knew I would still be able to save her. But I decided before I take to space I would take the buggy back. Otherwise I would be completely lost without it. So after dropping it off at base and resting up for the night I started the long journey back on foot. 
walking through the rain, but luckily I had my thermal heater to my suit applied. A very handy upgrade. And then the ship was in sight. And for the first time I hopped in the cockpit and man was I excited as I booted up the engines and slowly made my way back into space, learning the navigational controls and then finally applying all the thrusters. I'm coming, Darkin. Hold on! As I broke through orbit and slowly started turning the ship to the side, I spotted the wreckage of the new dawn and couldn't believe 50 days ago I made it out of there alive. Dokken, come in. Dokken, I'm here. I'm outside. You read me. But with no response, I could only assume the worst. As I parked the ship and opened up the hatch, I went over to investigate. But Dokken was nowhere in sight. But the module was still intact. I could most likely make my way back to Earth once I managed to complete my mission. I continued searching around for Dawkin, but she was nowhere to be seen. I started to second guess myself. Was it all in my head? Was she even still alive? As I made my way back to the ship and got ready to descend back into orbit, I felt nervous but finally I was breaking through Mars's atmosphere and making my way back to the base. I knew with no sign of the Phoenix crew or Dawkin, things would be left to me and me alone. Feeling a bit sad, feeling a bit lonely, I knew if I didn't get the mission done, there would be no chance of the civilians surviving. And boy was there still a lot of work to be done. So I got some much needed rest and the next day I sat out as I wanted to farm up a ton of resources. I didn't want to face any interruptions during my build. But resources were getting scarce and I had to go far and wide to search for all the metals that I would need. Oh, you guys are protecting the mother load here, aren't you? And with the coast clear, I finally got down to some good farming. Oh, you back for round two? And with a fully stocked buggy, I went back to rest up and the next day smelted down all the rubber and made some more sheets of metal and finally dropped down another airlock. Also added two more living quarters, dropped down a steel roof as well as another forge outside and continued smelting myself down the resources that I would need to complete the final barracks as well as the infill wall. The next day I decided to use the glitch I encountered before by placing down another habitat and raising the earth to construct myself a landing platform but I ended up submerging the buggy. Oh, no little buddy you, you okay. Uh, uh, okay you're fine finally i dropped down another and with that my platform was complete so i brought the spaceship over to test out the space and then filled in some more of the walls but i quickly ran out of resources smelted down some more and then rested up for yet another night the next day i completed my hallway and then dropped down the final walls needed in the habitat and then followed by some computer stations i added another power supply as well as some path lights for my landing strip but it was getting too dark to place my solar panels so they had to wait until the next morning and finally dropping the final piece needed to power the full place up. Now time for some decorations as I wanted to make myself a little rec room where the guys could sit and relax and play some video games. I added some more storage space and I then wanted to add a fabricator for this base as well so I made all the resources and then got to placing it down. Finally added the two beds to the master suites and this place was looking amazing. I added the printer as well and added some more small storage space since I had some leftover materials. The next day I wanted to start working on the crafting station so I dropped down a workbench followed by some storage crates and these were stackable. I upgraded the workbench, added a furnace and did some organizing for the rest of the day before going to bed. Elon, you better be grateful. The next day I brought over the rover and then once that was done I tended to the crops by grabbing some water, adding all the berries to the pant pot and then filling one storage with food and water before making the chem station and finally upgrading the furnace. With the upgrades to the furnace, I saw I could now make some cool berry juice as well as hydrazine, the fuel for the rover. So I decided to drop down some more gas tanks and I would try to fill these up before the astronauts arrives. How do you fill these things? I'm at the tap, I'm pressing buttons, nothing's working. Only I figured out there was a screen on the side and then went to grab some more hydrogen, but I completely cleared out the vein. I'm sorry, did I break you? Do you refill? And after depositing the gas, I decided I would move the other gas tank so I would have some better access in between them. Yeah, now see, that's much better. I also moved the liquid storage tanks and things were coming together nicely. The next I decided to grab some more hydrogen so I could start filling it up, but the problem was these tanks could take 5,000 gas. That was a lot. It would take me quite a few days, but finally things were starting to fill up. Next up I needed to go look for some nitrogen but I decided to rest up first and ventured out the next day. Completely empty out one vein but luckily another was nearby and then finally filling up the tank, resting up and then venturing out the next morning to grab the final batch needed. But that's when I saw my red-eyed friend yet again. Hey buddy, I don't know if you're friendly or not. 
I don't know if you're a ghost or an alien, but at this point I'm lonely, I just need friends. No, no, where did you go? That out the way, I was back to the nitrogen run and after filling the tank once, I went back even another time and on my way back, I spotted a mine I haven't explored before. So grabbing the final bit needed and the gas tank was nearly full. I just needed another 500, so after extracting it, I went to see what was in this mine. Turned out this was merely a back entrance to the gamma cave, so after exploring it, I went to bed. The next I discovered yet another robot and I can always deal with another useless assistant. I also made hydrazine to fill up the rover and then searched to see if there were even more of these robots around. The next day I went to repair it and then lured it back to base, introducing it to the other one. Ompa, meet your girlfriend. I decided to take the rover out as it was amazing at tracking through all the mountains. But the problem was I forgot about the worms completely and this thing was super slow. So feeling nervous I took to the chase but luckily managed to get away. I searched around the cliffside for a way to finally drive back up and then finally navigated back home. Spent the rest of the day organizing before a good night's rest. I decided to prepare a full food and water bin as well. Well, so I gathered a bunch of glass and then made some containers to fill them with water and then fill up the storage. And then thinking base was nearly done, the next morning led to some inspiration. I needed to make this place safe. That's why I decided to gather all the rocks that I could and I constructed a wall. A wall that would surround the entire base. I was only able to gather about 40 to 50 rocks a day so I decided I would spend the next 10 days focusing on getting the entire base completely surrounded with a rock wall. Did I make my entrance too narrow? Yes. Did I get the buggy stuck? Oh yes. But did I expect what would happen next? Oh no. What the hell? I'm gonna die. No. But with quick thinking I engaged my boosters and I was able to make a soft landing. And I immediately removed my entrance and made it slightly wider. I continued building the amazing wall that even Trump would approve. Won't be getting in here for long. It took many days of farming, only being able to add about 5 to 10 pieces a day, but finally I was getting close to the ending in sight. I made sure that I had a nice hallway in between the structures and the wall, and then finally I was down to the landing strip and I was able to complete it all up. Oh man, just look at it, it looks amazing! I'm actually so happy I did that. I then went in for a quick landing and even that was working perfect. This works amazing! So finally I cleared the rock building goal and I rested up before the next 10 days I decided I would gather up all the materials I possibly could. With 5 brand new diamond chisels I set out to gather up all the hard materials, gathering up anything that I could possibly think I would need to repair the spaceship. Over the next few days this process continued. There was just so many elements I had to keep track of. But finally I felt that I had everything that I would need as I loaded up the spaceship and going to have a nice relaxing evening's rest before starting it up and engaging the thrusters to break through orbit yet again. Making my way over to the new dawn, repairing the habitat but it then prompted me to make a nav module and required a strange blue material I had not seen before. Luckily after farming some asteroids I had all that I needed and I made my way back to hop in the spaceship and went back to Mars. Nearly running straight into a cliff I was able to safely go and touch down. I had completely forgotten about wires and computer chips. So I started making all those that I had with the resources available and after resting up I went back to space and constructed the nav module. Next up I had to work on a power module, but it required plutonium and that was something I haven't seen before. I searched around through the GPS and added even my uranium but nothing was working. Don't look at me, you're the assistants, tell me how. Finally I saw by smelting magnesium and uranium in the smelter I could get it done. I still needed a whole bunch of zirconium so after resting up I went over to the mother load. There were so many in this area and finally I was kitted out and took to the mines in search for the last missing batteries that I needed. I now had everything so I rested for the night before venturing to space. Constructing the power module I was prompted to make the airlock module next. Upon re-entry of Mars I grazed the side of a cliff and nearly lost my landing gear but luckily I was okay. After safely touching down I went in search for some aluminium and now I finally had the resources needed to complete the airlock module. And next up was communications, so I had a quick look at what I needed for it and I was definitely out of batteries at this time. So after safely touching down again I decided to take to the mines, but this was the day everything was about to change. You see I had never actually gone through the doors in this specific mine and that's when I spotted a member of the Phoenix crew. Her Stevie, what the hell happened to you buddy? But with the voice log still not telling me what had happened I decided to further investigate. 
going deeper and deeper than I've ever explored before. Oh, what the hell is this? Are these eggs? I found even more voice logs, but nothing actually described the events that took place. Finally, I grabbed some more batteries and continued searching, and spotted the decapitated body of Commander Sokolov. But that wasn't all. It led to a room filled with a ton of eggs as well as another data disk. I knew I needed to get out of here, and that's when I heard the noises. The Queen was still here. I need to get the hell out of here before that thing decides to wake up. The mission was definitely compromised. This place was no longer safe. After struggling to sleep that night, I decrypted the data disk and it gave me a draw and I knew I now had a plan. If I would be able to draw into the Queen's lair, I might just have enough fresh air and sunlight go in there and damage her before the other astronauts arrived. Excuse me guys, where the hell did you come from? But that's when all hell was starting to break loose. What the hell was that? There was a lot more alien traffic than normal and the meteor that rained down wasn't a meteor at all. In fact, it was an egg. What? Is this seriously an egg? <gasps> oh, great. It's freaking raining aliens now. I quickly grabbed some fuel for the buggy so I could go search for the batteries, but I got ambushed by a whole bunch of aliens. Are you guys freaking serious? But I actually managed to turn the buggy over, but luckily it fell back upright and I was able to slowly start making my escape. As I booked it to the edge of the mountain, not looking where I was driving, I ended up getting the buggy stuck. Dehydration detected. This was not good at all. It felt like everything was going wrong, like it was Armageddon or something. I managed to get out and luckily not fly across the map, took care of the little alien friend nearby, and I went to clear out all those that were back at base. But there were just too many and I was being overran. I needed to run for my life, so I emptied out some more clips and ran to the rover, finally finding yet another mine and then going inside to grab the batteries needed and then slowly making my way back. It seems like the aliens were drawn to the drill, so I decided to turn it off until I'm fully ready to escape. So dropping down the communications module, next I had to build the auxiliary module. Just two more modules to go and I would be able to get off this forsaken place. This time I safely re-entered and went into land and since I left the draw on while I was in space I was a bit worried the place might be overran, just shy of breaking through the cliff into the queen's lair. So I safely turned it off. Please get off my property, you're not welcome here. I had all the materials on hand and needed and it just needed to craft it up and then finally I took back to space again. Completed the build of the auxiliary module and now just the engine module was remaining. So I had a quick look on all the resources I needed and went to farm some more asteroids before going back to base to make some more plutonium as well as the last items needed. Another good night's rest and then taking back to space to finally complete the construction of the entire spaceship. I was quickly running out of time and with the engine finally built I now just needed to still make myself a cry pod and hopefully get a message out to the incoming civilian ship before it arrives. I made the last missing hose and then grabbed all my food and drinks, dropped off all my supplies and I got ready to turn on the drill, ready to cause complete havoc. As I heard the queen erupting from the ground, I started to lift off, saying goodbye to my base, all the hard work that I have done, it all led up to this moment. I have either just saved them or doomed them as I flew into orbit for the final time, did a quick inspection of the ship and then made my way into the airlock module, ready to place down my cryopod where I would sleep off the next few months of travel. I charted my course to Earth and then quickly navigated to the cryopod. Navigation course charting successful. Please proceed to your cryogenic chamber. Cryogenic sleep system initiated. I now just needed to hope my Mayday message would reach them in time. Engage thruster in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thruster engage. Because you see, only if our ships are close enough, the signal would transmit. And a mere three days later, the passenger ship was finally in range of me. But see, they would never get that distress message. Because in front of me was a black hole and I was about to enter it. Unknowingly, I was bending through all space and time, not knowing where or when I would turn out. This is Astronaut Kruger signing off for now. Because you see my next adventure will be back on a primitive earth with a bunch of new strange creatures that I have never seen before in my life. Even though I am armed with the knowledge of technology and possess some from the ship, it still does not exist and I will need to survive all the different elements that the world now has to offer completely alone on the planet, braving through all the elements in 10,000 BC 
Icarus 100 Days coming soon. A huge special thank you to Enlisted yet again for sponsoring this video and while you wait for the new one be sure to check out the game and remember to use my link when downloading it to land that massive awesome bonus pack. I hope to see you guys again soon. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to my Patreons. Here are some more videos that you might enjoy watching. That's all for now, see you soon.